Okay, here we go. This is the chapter two in class review. For the first question, it asks us to solve the equation and justify each step. So this is the proof that I talked about, the algebraic one. So here's, here's the example of it. So we're going to make a T-chart out of this. And we've got our statements and we've got our reasons. The first you always put is the given. So 2x minus 8 equals 3 times x plus 5. And this is our given. Next step. Now, there could be a couple different things you can do, but most of you are going to do a distributive step here. So this will be 3x plus 15. And this is distributive property. So that's what we did. We did the distributive property. So then step three. Now, again, there are a couple different routes to do this. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x from each side. So I'll end up with negative 8 equals x plus 15, and this was subtraction property. And then step 4, now I'm going to subtract 15 from each side. So we're going to say negative 23, I'll put it down here, equals x. And again, this was a subtraction property. Now you could have just done this in three steps because right here it's the same reason, right? So I could have done all of this in this second step and had the answer as step three because these two reasons are the same. Now, if you check an answer in the back of the book for something like this, they're going to flip it around and say x equals negative 23, and that would just be the symmetric property, but we're not going to worry about that for tomorrow, okay? We're just going to make sure we understand step by step how to do this. All right, now for number two, it says consider the statement minions are yellow, okay? So we need to write this in if-then form. So how can we do this? So since we want it in if-then form, we're going to say if you are a minion, then you are yellow. Okay? Now, we want this is the P right here, and this is the Q. So remember, for the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive, we are just manipulating the P and the Q. For the converse, this is from Q goes to P. So we flip it around, and we will say, if you are yellow, then you are a minion. And then the inverse, we're going to say not P goes to not Q. So if you are not a minion, so if you are not a minion, then you are not yellow. And finally, the contrapositive, I'll put the contrapositive up over here. For the contrapositive, we want to flip it so it's not Q to not P. We switch it around and put nots. So in this case, we're going to say, if you are not yellow, if you are not yellow, then you are not a minion. Okay, moving on to number three. Let's move all of this up here. And number three says, use the diagram to solve for x. So let's take a look at the diagram that we have, and we need to solve for x in this diagram. So I'm told that the measure of angle two is 2x plus 10. And I'm told that the measure of angle three is x plus 20. But I'm also told that AC and ED are perpendicular. So those two lines are perpendicular. Since they are perpendicular, I know they add up to be 90. So I can say 2x plus the 10 
plus the x plus the 20 has to be 90. So solving for x, I get 3x plus 30 equals 90. Over here, I'm going to say 3x equals, and I'm going to subtract 30 from each side, 60, and then divide each side by 3. So x is going to be 20. So moving on to part B. Part B is a different problem. Just be aware that part B is asking you for something completely different. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got with this and move on. So angle one right here is 4x minus 1. And angle five is 3x plus 8. Take a look. Here's a straight line crosses through. There's a straight line crosses through. These are vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. So I can say 4x minus 1 equals 3x plus 8 because these are vertical angles. So solving for x, I get x equals 9. I subtracted 3x from each side, and then I added 1 to each side. So x equals 9. So now let's take a look at part C. For part C, again, it's a different problem. And part C says the measure of angle 4 is 2x plus 12. So let me erase some of this other stuff in here so that we can kind of see what we're looking at. Oh, it's not letting me erase, so all right, we'll just deal with it. Maybe now it will let me. Not sure why it's not letting me, but we'll just deal with it. All right, so angle 4 right here is the 2x plus 12, and angle 1 this time in here, let me cross that out, is 5x plus 3. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what we got. We got angle 4 as being 2x plus 12, and then angle 1, I'm sorry, angle... Angle 1 is being 5x plus 3, so these two angles. Now, look, I know that angle 2 plus angle 3 is how much in here? It's 90. So I can say that if I add up all four of these angles, take a look. If I add up angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4, all four of these, I'm going to get 180. So let's do that. I'm going to add up angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, plus the measure of angle 3, plus the measure of angle 4 to get 180. And let's put in what each is. Angle 1 is 5x plus 3. Angle 2 is... Questions there? All right. Okay, so for number 4, let's... Uh, Look at part A again. On part A, I'm told that this bisects the angle, and I need to come up with the reason for each. And that means ABD will be congruent to DBG. And again, we're going to fix this to say ABG. And these two add up to be the whole thing because of angle addition postulate. All right, so now we have the measure of angle ABD, ABD, right in here, equaling one half the measure of angle ABG. Well, this is because of an angle bisector. The angle bisector is going to tell us that this will be half the whole thing. It cuts it in half. That could be our reason for this. For part C, angle D, B, G is congruent to angle F, B, E. So they're saying that this angle right here is congruent to that angle right there. The reason for that would be vertical angles. Okay, moving on to part D, it says that the measure of angle... ABG, ABG, 
plus the measure of angle GBC is 180. So we are told that this angle right here plus this angle right there equals 180. So the whole thing is 180. And this is, you, you have several options here. You could put linear pair. You could put supplementary. You can even put definition of straight angle. So any of these, I will accept. And then finally on part E, BG equal is congruent to BG. So segment BG congruent to segment BG, that's just the reflexive property. Okay, looking at the next one, number five. Slide this up. <clears throat> we have to write the next four terms in the pattern. So let's see what's happening here. Let's see. Let's. You can try anything here. It's almost kind of like a guess and check. You're just testing to see what's happening. All right. From one to seven, it looks like I've. It's not a multiplication. I mean, from seven to fourteen, I could say I multiplied by two, but then that wouldn't work. From one to seven, I can say I added six. Uh, 7 to 14, I could say I added 7. Then I'm adding 8. Ah, so it looks like there's an addition pattern here. So if I add 9, so here's the next 4. So if I add 9, I'll get 31. So then I would need to add 10 to get 41. And then I would need to add 11 to get 52. And then add 12 to get 64. So that's the next 4 that's the next four terms in the pattern. So on tomorrow's test, you'll have one like this, where you have a numeric one, and you'll also have a graphical visual one where you have to finish the pattern graphically. Okay, for number six, it says, given the measure of angle one is 45 degrees, and <clears throat> the measure of angle two is three times the measure of angle one. We need to prove that angle one and the measure of angle two, that there's, we should say, this should just be angle one and angle two are supplementary. We shouldn't have an M in front of it, but that's okay. All right, well, let's take a look. Let's make our T-chart, but first let's plan it out. If I said that angle one is 45 and I'm looking for two angles to be supplementary, so if I said that this is 45, that means supplementary is going to be 180, this has to be three times that according to what I'm told. So 45 times three gives me 135. So this angle in here should be 135. So we need to prove this, that if this is 45 and this is three times 45, I'll get a total of 180. That's our plan for the proof. So let's see how we're going to write this out. That's the hard part. Looking at it, sometimes it's a little easier. Actually writing it out is difficult. So we're given, okay, again, we are given that the measure of angle one is 45 degrees. And we're told that the measure of angle two is three times the measure of angle one. This is all that we are given. So step two, let's see. I'm trying to show that something is supplementary, so I want to show that the measure of angle one plus three times that. So let's say the measure of angle two, let's go ahead and do a substitution step in here. And we're going to say the measure of angle two equals three times 45. This was straight up substitution. So then step three would be, okay, well, that means the measure of angle two equals 135. And this was just a multiplication property. All I did was multiply. Now, well, I know the measure of angle two is 35. I know the measure of angle one is 45. I could say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180. This was 
What, what do you think this reason is right here? So this is actually just a substitution step because I know that 45 plus 135 is 180. So this is, we can write it as substitution. And so that means angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary by definition of supplementary angles. All right, we are on our last problem. If it is cold, then it is snowing. We need to find a counterexample. Okay, so what if it was 45 degrees outside and raining? Well, it could be cold and it's not snowing. So if we say we're outside, it's cold, and it's raining, that's not the same as it being snowing. That's our counterexample. So we can be somewhere where it's cold and raining, not snowing. Here in Southern California, it can get cold and rainy and doesn't have to snow. So ex exactly. Will it rain is a good question. <laughs> we're in Southern California. It never rains anymore. All right.